Welcome to the Vol Bros. My name is Evan. This is my brother, Rustin, and we are two Vol Bros who are actually bros in real life. And as you all know, we've been really fortunate with a lot of really great guests that we've been able to have on our show. And today is no different. We are continuing the trend. Uh, we are very fortunate to have Charlie Burris joining us today. Uh, you can find Charlie on Twitter. There's his uh, Twitter handle below his name there, Charlie underscore Burris. You also probably most uh, know him from the Big Orange podcast with a to z sports in nashville and we'll let him tell us about that later uh, charlie thank you so much for joining us today we really appreciate it absolutely guys uh, i'm glad i could fit it in i, I told you i'm kind of driving in between places right now i got a busy schedule uh but uh yeah I, I just love coming on any show like this i like to know everybody that's in the the vol ecosystem so i'm i'm happy to be here awesome thank you well, Charlie, you're you're in Nashville, so um, I'm sure you're surrounded by lots of opinions on this. But um, I was not a fan of the Titans' selection of Will Levis, and um, I'm just curious what what your opinion is on on that selection, and you know how how people around you are responding to the Titans deciding that Will Levis was a better option than Hendon Hooker. Yeah, it's it's been interesting, and I, I guess full full disclosure, I I'm actually in I'm a Knoxville based guy, but the company A to Z Sports is based out of right. Nashville, so I I see everything that all of those guys say, and everything that happens on our website, and all of those things, and it's been an interesting breakdown because obviously, I mean, we did a segment on our show this past week, and I just hate it. I can't stand it. I don't know <laughs> why they did that. I and and it's not even. You know, everybody who's out, outside looking in has been like, oh, you, they shouldn't choose a quarter or you shouldn't hate a quarterback based on where he went to college. It's not where he went to college. I think he right. stinks. I think he's a bad quarterback. <laughs> so I like that really is the bottom line for me. I I, I don't think that he's he's been a, a great leader for that team. And obviously the results show that he hasn't been just great as a quarterback in general. And so why would I want him on on the football team that I root for in the NFL? So uh, but outside of that, the, the Titans fans that aren't connected in, so there's there's a lot of Alabama fans who are Titans fans because of Derrick Henry. There's a lot of Al or, uh, Titans fans who are just kind of agnostic in general, and it's been very split. There's a lot of people that feel similarly to me just without the Kentucky element, you know, where they're just like, uh, it kind of looks like he stinks. I don't know why they did this. <laughs> and then also there's there's a lot of, there's a lot of people who are like, I kind of don't like it, but let's see. I'm going to give him a chance. Well, it's Rand Carthon's first deal, and we'll we'll see what happens. But that's – I haven't seen anybody that's just like, yes, we got Will Levis. Thank goodness. I'm so glad. That's the guy I want. Like, there's not that – it doesn't exist um, for obvious reasons. Um, but, yeah, I mean, for me personally, just ugh, – ugh, I couldn't dislike that more. Do you think – like, how do you think that conversation went? Because I've been sharing um, the stat line from the Vanderbilt game when Will Levis had a 17 QBR. Um, you know, I'm given to understand that that is not optimal. Not ideal. Um, so how do you think the Titans justified that, that decision? Because when you look at numbers, and in football, numbers don't lie. Um, how do you think they looked at his overall numbers and came to the conclusion that they were just going to overlook it? it? It really seems like it just comes down to potential. There's also a big element of the fact that physically he looks like Josh Allen. I've seen so much of that. Um, he's just always oh, the prototypical Josh Allen style. Well, yeah. And, and everybody goes, well, Josh Allen stunk in college. Yeah. But <laughs> Josh Allen is like a giant outlier. That's why he's special. He was a huge outlier. Most guys that stink in college stink in the NFL. I mean, that's yeah. that's generally the case. And and he's a you know just a complete oddity in the fact that he was pretty subpar in college and then has become one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. So I, I mean that just I uh, I gotta imagine I think this has been a theory that I've seen with some of the guys at A to Z is that Vrabel is a very like brash, overly confident. Just kind of like, I mean, you, if you watch his decisions, you kind of go like, where is this confidence coming from? What What do you, why? Why are you doing this? And I think Levis has a good deal of that. And I could see Rabel kind of 
liking that confidence that he has, even if it's misplaced, because I think Vrabel absolutely has misplaced confidence in a lot of ways. Um, so maybe that, but I, I don't know. It, it this to me, I, I don't know what Rand Ran Carthon is actually thinking, but it felt like to me this was really pushed on him by Vrabel. Again, this yeah. is speculation. I have no real, no real proof of that. But it's just so hard for me to believe that a first time, you know, just weeks on the job GM is going to go put his neck on the line right. for a for a complete unknown entity. I mean, it just is wild because you. You look and like Vra- Vrabel is probably on some amount of thin ice, and then if Vrabel gets fired, I mean, is Cartha not going out with him? I like I maybe not. Maybe he stays in. Maybe he fires Vrabel. I I doubt he has the authority to do that, honestly, with the current setup. But um, yeah, that that just seemed wild to me to be like this. This is the kid that you're gonna put your neck on the line for, really. So I honestly, I don't know. I don't know what their justification is. It's it seems crazy, especially with Rand Carthen coming from the 49ers. I mean, could you see Kyle Shanahan in a war room going, yes, we absolutely want Will Levis. You know, <laughs> there, there's no way that he would have ever allowed that pick to happen. Yeah, the I was really hoping with his background, honestly, that there would be some move like a Jimmy G that they would just bring in be like, okay, he's a band-aid guy. Sure. We'll just stretch it and see what happens. And uh, yeah, because I wanted exactly what San, San Francisco has been working with uh, specifically when they had the, the offensive coordinator that left for the, the Dolphins head coaching job. I mean, I, w- I want offense. I want offense for, for the mm-hmm. Titans. And this just doesn't, there's nothing. Nothing about this draft, nothing about the coaches of this team, nothing says that the offense is going to improve in any market way. And so that's really frustrating and annoying. And, you know, I, I'm going to save my money for this season, probably not, you know, <laughs> not go to too many games. And that's that's just something they're going to have to deal with. I think they're going to run into a lot of that. And You know, there, there's something to be said about like the, the Tennessee fan element of that, too, where they're pissing off all the Tennessee fans. But that's well, that's kind of a, a different discussion especially moving into a brand new billion dollar stadium. Why would you not want to go <laughs> draft the guy who could sell millions of jerseys? It, it's just mind boggling. I have never understood why Titans, the Titans organization does not, at least in some ways, try really hard to cater to Tennessee fans. And that, yeah. and I don't mean by that that they need to go out and draft a bunch of Tennessee players. Not really at all. I don't think they need to do that because Tennessee players in the last 15 years have been not good, generally speaking. Uh, so, you know, I don't blame them there. But, like, in a situation like this where I, I think if you were – I don't know if they were choosing between a set of quarterbacks or what the conversation was there, but let's say they were choosing between a Hendon Hooker and a Will Levis. I think Hendon Hooker's skill set is better than Will Levis is. He's clearly a better leader of a football team. He was way better in interviews and things like that. And you look Absolutely. and the, the, p- picking him could have made up a lot of ground that they lost when Peyton Manning went to the Colts. Yep. So – so many Tennessee fans suddenly became Colts fans in, in 1998 just because Peyton went there. Cause, cause no, I mean, Tennessee fans before that just really weren't NFL fans at all. And then suddenly they're Colts fans when they should have been Titans fans. And this, this could have made up for that. It was the perfect opportunity. They could have gotten him late in the second round. They wouldn't have had to trade up. They wouldn't have to give up anything. They could have had him just later in the second round, gotten that. And then generational QB who Tennessee fans, obviously, I mean, were over the moon, about the guy. I mean, he's, he's going to turn a bunch of Tennessee fans into Lions fans. That's yep. what you get in Indian Hooker. Yep. And that's so wild. It's so stupid on the Titans part. I, uh, they, they had a real opportunity there, but, but again, outside of that, I don't know why they don't care. Tennessee fans. It's the biggest fan base in the entire state by a mile. It's so much larger than the Titans fan base, like crazily larger than the Titans fan base. And they do nothing. They don't have like, there's not like a game during the season that's like it's Tennessee night and they put like a Titans and Tennessee at like the, the Predators do some stuff like that, like outreach mm-hmm. of things. And they don't do any of that. And I've never understood it. And now you have I mean, the GMs of Florida guy. So Lord knows he doesn't care about that. Um, <laughs> and so, I, yeah, I 
I don't, I, man, they, they do so much stuff that's baffling and I don't know why I continue to be a fan, but here, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> It sounded like every Vols fan for the last 12 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've, we've all had that moment. It's like, why am I wasting my time on this? Uh, yeah. At least they, they made it worth it this past year. Thankfully, now we're all coming out of battered Vols syndrome. We're on the opposite side now. Hopefully. Hey, speak, Hopefully. Speaking of that, we, we, we do this every once in a while. Speaking of that, uh, everybody can get their battered Vols syndrome survivor shirt at thevolbros.com. There you go. Um, <laughs> That's great. That was a nice little, nice little segue. Yeah, well, Charlie. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Charlie. Let everybody know where they can they can follow your work because um, we really appreciate you joining us and your time. Uh, we know you're busy today, and so that we really do appreciate you carving out some time for us. Absolutely. Uh, a to Z Sports dot com. There, I believe there's a tab on there that says podcasts. You can find uh, the Big Orange podcast there, but then at Charlie underscore Burris for my Twitter. I know I'm I'm a bit of a polarizing figure on there because I'm a uh, I don't I don't know some some people would call me a negaval I guess I don't really think I'm that crazily negative I'm I'm a negative titan I can tell you that much that one I'm <laughs> super negative about but uh, but I uh, that that's me but then also from the Big Orange podcast I host the the Big Orange podcast with Zach Reagan and everybody loves his Twitter account because um, he's just posting awesome Tennessee videos all day long. So go follow him. I think he's at Zach TNT, and he, he co-hosts the Big Orange Podcast with me every Monday at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. We go live there, and you can just uh, come be a part of the show on the A to Z Sports Nashville YouTube channel. So go subscribe if you want to see the Big Orange Podcast and find us there at 7 p.m. on Mondays. Y'all have a great show. Um, Y'all do a really good job. Charlie, I forgot to mention one last thing. Every person who joins our show joins an elite group of people. You are now an honorary bro. And oh, so heck yeah. that is that is super <laughs> exciting. And we, as a thank you, we are going to send you this shirt. <laughs> oh wow. You are you are now an honorary bro. So the that I mean, that is like the pinnacle of media career in Tennessee. So there you go. <laughs> I I can't believe it. I I finally I've made it to the mountaintop. Uh, that's exactly right. This, <laughs> no, I told, that's that's awesome. Mark Nagy, Mark Nagy and Reed Carringer are going to try to coordinate a photo with both of them in the shirt together. Um, <laughs> but, well, I'll uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that I I wear it on the show and I I bring it up. That's that's a that's really. Awesome. You, you guys are some better at the whole podcast thing. I, I need, I need marketing ideas and things like this. I, I should think of this, but that's not my, my strong suit, but that's no, that's awesome. I really appreciate it guys. Hey, we appreciate you. Thank you so much, Charlie, for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you so much uh, for everybody who is maybe new to the Vol bros. Uh, we encourage you to follow Danny White's advice. Text a buddy, man, uh, text a buddy and let him know about the Vol bros. Uh, we got some good stuff going on here. Awesome interviews, and we got another awesome interview today. Uh, but we appreciate everybody uh, tuning in today, and we hope everybody has a great weekend ahead of them. Huge weekend for the Tennessee baseball team at Georgia. And so we'll be going live over the next couple days uh, to recap that series. So hope everybody has a great, great weekend. Uh, happy Cinco de Mayo, and uh, we'll see you next time.